So most of my day has been people pointing out that I was wrong, and I was. I honestly thought that Call of Duty would be going console exclusive. Microsoft revealed today that that's not happening. And there was also a really, really interesting interview with Microsoft's Brad Smits talking about their plans as they try and smooth things over as the FTC dives into the 70, nearly $70 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. I've collected a few thoughts and let's sort of go over everything that happened today. It's, it's, it's pretty significant news. So let's get right into it. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. If you like my videos, uh oh, the sub button's not working. The sub button's broke. Let's fix it. Go, sub button. <laughs> I have to manually do it for some reason. There we go. Hit that subscribe button, <laughs> hit that bell. All right, that's enough of a, a subscribe promo. So, real quick, um, the big thing that happened was they announced that games like Call of Duty, games like Overwatch will continue to go on competing platforms. Now we did an episode with Hogla and he talked, he's a lawyer, he's dealt with this stuff for years. And he talked about what he thinks Microsoft would be doing in the near future. And guess what? They are basically going by his playbook and playing nice with everybody else in the industry. So taking a quick look, and this is the official Microsoft blog. They said, first, some commentators have asked whether we will continue to make popular content like Activision's Call of Duty available on competing platforms like Sony's PlayStation. The obvious concern is that Microsoft could make this title available exclusively on the Xbox console, undermining opportunities for Sony PlayStation users. To be clear, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement with Activision. And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony fans can continue to enjoy the games they love. We are also interested in in taking similar steps to support Nintendo's successful platform, we believe this is the right thing for the industry, for gamers, and for our business. Second, some may ask why today's principles do not apply immediately and wholesale to the current Xbox console store. It's important to recognize that emerging legislation is being written to address app stores on those platforms that matter most to creators and consumers. PCs, mobile phones, and other general purpose computing devices. For millions of creators across a multitude of businesses, these platforms operate as gateways every day to hundreds of millions of people. These platforms have become essential to our daily work and personal lives. Creators cannot succeed without access to them. Emerging legislation is not being written for specialized computing devices like gaming consoles for good reasons. Gaming consoles specifically are sold to gamers at a loss to establish a robust and viable ecosystem for game developers. The costs are not recovered later through revenue earned in the dedicated console store. Nonetheless, we recognize that we will need to adapt our business model even for the store on the Xbox console beginning to today, we will move forward to apply principles one through seven to the store on the Xbox console. We're committed to closing the gap on the remaining principles over time. In doing so, we will incorporate the spirit of new laws even beyond their scope while moving forward in a way that protects the needs of game developers, gamers, and competitive and healthy game console ecosystems. And one through seven are all, we will enable all developers. Sorry, I know I'm just basically reading this, but it's really, really important. They talk about, we will enable all developers to access our app store as long as they meet reasonable and transparent standards for quality and safety. We will continue to protect the consumers and gamers who use our app store, ensuring that developers meet our standards for security. We will continue to respect the privacy of consumers in our app stores, giving them controls to manage their data and how it is used. Accountability, we will hold our own apps to the same standards we hold competing apps. Number five, we will not use any non-public information or data from our app store to compete with developers' apps. Fairness and transparency. We will treat apps equally in our app store without unreasonable preference or ranking of 
or our ugh, of our apps <laughs> or business partners apps over others we will be transparent about rules for promotion and marketing in our app store and apply these consistently and objectively so those were the seven principles i guess not that important to what we're discussing but regardless there was a separate interview that tom warren initially brought to my attention he said tom warren tweeted i'll just bring up his tweet um i, I have some thoughts about this interview myself tom warren said there are some who still think Microsoft isn't being clear here with COD and other Activision games staying on PlayStation. This interview with CNBC makes it 100% clear. Microsoft wants more games like Minecraft that are available on multiple platforms. And I would actually take it a step further than Tom Warren. I think this is a further push that Microsoft is trying to make to get Game Pass on other platforms. So. This is the website. I'm just, I have CNBC up so that I'm not going to play it, but this is the, the source for it. And I will read to you from my crazy, you know, I'll just bring up my, my crazy person notes here. Just one second. What is it? F11. <laughs> okay. So here's my crazy person notes about, uh, today's story. Oh boy. All right, this is a terrible idea. Let me fix this really quick. I'll, I'll just read it to you, okay? I don't know why it's being all weird. The document's like 900 pages and it has all of my notes <laughs> when I think of these videos. Anyway, um, so I thought this meant a lot of Activision games would be exclu exclusive. It turns out that's, gonna, that's wrong, at least for existing IPs. And based on what Brad Smits is saying, which partially, let's all not forget, that as whole law informed us all, this is partially to just sort of smooth over everything going on with the FTC and the investigation. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna comply with any restrictions that you want, whatever you want, we're going to do it. But he says some really, really interesting stuff in the CNBC interview, and I'm gonna read it to you now, but you can go watch it. I'm gonna post it in the description below. So I thought Overwatch, Hearthstone, I figured those would go multi-plat. Uh, I'm surprised, definitely to say the least. I thought for sure they would be aiming for console exclusivity. I don't think this has anything to do with uh, Sony and the Bungie deal and Bungie remaining cross-platform. Potentially, I mean, it might. Uh, but when I listen to what this person from my, Brad Smith, sorry. When I listen to what Brad Smith says, over at Microsoft, I'm, I'm really intrigued about what he's saying. I'm just going to read more quotes to you. I apologize. We are focused at Microsoft on our acquisition of Activision Blizzard. We have more first party titles. We'll have more first party titles. So he's talking about the app store, but he brings up the Activision Blizzard, uh, uh, acquisition. And he talks about how they're going to have more first party titles. So interesting there that he references first party. But what we're really focused on doing as well as creating is, cr <laughs> oh my goodness. But what we're really focused on doing as well is creating what we call a new universal app store. Interesting, right? An app store that will enable any gamer on any device to access and download and use any app. So it would work for mobile. It would work on consoles. It would work on PCs. I will really, I think, it will really, I think, bring new opportunities to people who create games and people who make them. I don't know why my document's being so weird right now, but I'll just let you read along with me. So here's where I'm at. Uh, if you think about it, people increasingly want to download the same apps on multiple devices. And so simplifying this in this way is really a logical step forward for the industry as a whole. One of the things we... One of the things as we move forward with a regulatory review of this acquisition, again, smoothing things over with the FTC, is that great titles like Call of Duty from Activision Blizzard today will continue to be available on the Sony PlayStation. We'd like to bring it to Nintendo devices. We'd like, we'd like to, he's using very specific language. We'd like to bring the other popular titles that Activision Blizzard has and ensure that they continue to be available on PlayStation. That has become available. Oh, that they become available on Nintendo. I'm sorry, I'm butchering these quotes. 
One of the first acquisitions, really the first acquisition made after Satya Nadella became CEO was of Minecraft. That was back in September of 2014. And what we've done with that acquisition, I think, is a clear indicator of what we hope to do if we acquire Activision Blizzard, mainly invest even more in innovation, bring it to more people, bring it to more platforms, make it even more useful and hopeful, hopefully delightful for the people who use it. So all of those things address what Hoglaw told us Microsoft needed to address. Basically, they want to further innovate. So that has addressed the innovation challenge that they're going to face with the FTC. Them playing nice with other consoles. They say, hey, we want to bring all these games to other consoles. What does that mean, though? Because they're talking about all these App Store things. And I'm really curious, is this how they're trying to get Game Pass onto other platforms? And maybe with Sony and Nintendo sort of facing this new legislation, which, well, let's be honest, eventually it will get the consoles. Maybe Microsoft's trying to get ahead of it, just like they got ahead of the automatic canceling of your subscription services and such. Um, some of the some of the other bullet point notes that I just took, uh, Smith said that other companies would create app stores that work the way he describes and that they would compete for app devs to make games on their platforms, largely describing how consoles work right now. But on top of those kinds of standards, we think there's more room for more stores to reach more people with more choices, more games, and more apps. And we think that would be better for everybody. Will that require that we all embrace a certain level of change? Yes, it will. And then he said some stuff that didn't really matter. I don't think anyway, but this can be a bright future. This should be a bright future for our industry. And most importantly, for the people who create apps and the people, the consumers, the gamers who use them. So here's my two cents on the whole thing. I think he is describing a world where they want Game Pass on everything. That that has been no secret, right? But I think they're either saying, hey, we want to do this. Hopefully these other platforms let us. And then the ball sort of in the other platforms court. And they're like, oh no, they didn't let us release those games on other platforms. They're going to let them continue to release Call of Duty and everything like that. But how this all shakes out next year when this actually goes through, I'm very, very curious about. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It does, it, I was wrong about Call of Duty. I was wrong about their goal of making things exclusive. I feel like this is actually a strategy to blow up exclusivity as we think about it and start developing basically app stores on consoles like Xbox Game Pass on your PlayStation 5 and PlayStation Spartacus on your Xbox, or at least that's what I read from all of these interviews. But yeah, Quite a surprising news drop today as the FTC investigation and everything heats up. This has to be approved in, I believe he said, 17 different places. So it's going to be a long road to get there. Um, yeah, time's going to tell where we go from here. Let me know what you think. Do you think he's describing a, a world where we have different services on our consoles on our PCs. Like if honestly, if PlayStation launches Spartacus and it's available on PC, I would subscribe. If Spartacus was on my Xbox and if subscription services came to other platforms, I would either remain subscribed or become subscribed to those new services. I would love that because for me, it means that I don't have to buy another thing, right? But then, but I mean, just thinking it through, then Sony, like with their console sales, their console sales kind of become meaningless. And that's a really, really important thing for them. So I don't think they would ever go for something like that because that's how they get their sales. Unless it was something like PlayStation Now, where it's games that have been exclusive on their console for like at least a year or something. Hmm. I don't know, just the late night ramblings of a, uh, of Destin Legary. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening to me read all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, well, internet, I'm taking my L for the day. I'm going to get out of here, but let me know what you think about the whole app store thing. 
I don't know what else to say about it. I, I think it's 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 very interesting. Is this just them playing nice with the FTC? Is this them trying to be like, look, we're the good guy. We're trying to play nice with everybody. And then they do something different if that doesn't work out the way that they had hoped. Time's going to tell. But it does seem like at least the games that we know of today are going to be continuing as cross-platform titles. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know when my videos go live. Uh, this is just, it's still great for everybody. So yeah. Uh, if you want to become a member, memberships are turned on. Thank you so much to all of the members who said, hey, Destin, I want to support your channel. I greatly appreciate you. If you would like to click that join button down there, you can also become a member. I'm going to get out of here, go to bed. What a day. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody.